Hello everyone, welcome to Connect to Florida. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the three most common questions that I have been asked here recently in 2023. So we're kind of about halfway through the year, not quite, but just about there. And Florida has had so many changes between Hurricane Ian and all of the things that have been going on with interest rates and you know many of you know that i work coastal florida and predominantly a second home market so lots of things moving around insurance issues insurance companies pulling out it's been a little bit wild the wild wild west down here in southwest florida so i thought it would be kind of interesting to kind of go back through and i also consulted with google on this to see if the questions that i have been getting are lining up with the questions that are commonly asked online here in 2023 and amazingly they certainly are so we're going to talk about three questions that might help you in making the decision if you want to sell now if you want to buy now or if you just want to stay the course and watch the market now if this is the first time we're meeting i want to say hello my name is barrett pastor and i've been a real estate broker for 25 years so hopefully i'm coming to you from a place of knowledge and experience and i can be a resource for you here in our beautiful area all right Number one, the big question that I get, and this was also one that was 2023 for Florida in Google data, is the market going to crash? Is the housing market going to crash? All right, so generally speaking, from my perspective, you need to see for, for a housing market to crash, okay, for the bubble to burst, you know. Um, we usually need to see about a 25 to 30 percent rapid decline in values. Now, by rapid, I, in my opinion, you know, that's all I can give is my opinion. I would say that's about over a 90 to 120 day period. Now, why do I say that? Well, here in Southwest Florida, our appraisers, generally speaking, don't go back any farther than four months, 120 days, because our market changes to that degree. That isn't new. It's been that way for many, many, many years. We look for comps that are the most recent. And in some areas, you might be able to go back six months. Some areas, you might go back a year. In rural areas, you might have to go back even beyond that. But in Southwest Florida, which is a very fast moving market, many areas of Florida, even Orlando, which is not obviously coastal Florida, some of these faster moving markets, they do shorten that time period up to four months. So I look at that first, and then I look at the amount of available inventory. So have we met the decline? The answer is yes and no. In some areas, in some communities, yes, we have seen as much as a 25 to 30% decline in value in that time period. I can think of a couple communities in Southwest Florida, one being Benita National, that's seen a, a pretty rapid decline. It went up fast, it came down fast. So there's that. And there's a couple other golf course communities that I would put in that category as well. Um, but here's the thing, not as a whole, we have not at all. And here's the other big thing. The other thing that I think influences what we would call a bursting bubble or a crash in the real estate market is available inventory. So when you have just an abundance of inventory. Those two things, those two ingredients bake the cake, right? So we are lacking that. And I think that's a, a main thing to be lacking. We do not have an abundance of inventory. In fact, I would say that from Sarasota down to Marco Island, there is a lack of inventory. So you're talking about Naples, Benita, Fort Myers, Cape Cape Coral may be different. That might be a pocket that I'll say I'll look at a little bit differently because there is a, that could get close to the bubble in my opinion, in my humble opinion. There's a lot on the market there and there's some other problems going on there as well, but that's a different video altogether. But then upwards, Venice, um, Northport, on up, Welland Park to Sarasota. So I'm talking about that little stretch and that's what I'm calling Southwest Florida. As you look at that as a whole, there is not, at one big grouping of 25 to 30% price reduction. But what there is, 
minus Cape Coral, maybe minus some areas in Northport, some areas, the areas that are closer to Welland Park, different story. Um, as a whole, we do not have an abundance of inventory. In fact, we have a shortage of inventory. So in my opinion, we are on the cusp. I think it could go either direction to be determined. Right now, we're stabilized. If I'm answering the question for this moment, I'm gonna call it a stabilizing market. We're not seeing any big dips. Some areas are, some communities are. But as a whole, we're pretty stable. All right, number two, the other really common question I get all the time and really have for a long time, how can I make my house make more money at sale? So in other words, what can I do to maximize profit when I sell my home? So this is what I would say, and I'm speaking out of the Florida market because that's the market that I work. These are a couple of things you can do. Go through the house with a critical eye. Remove anything that is pulling your eye. So if you walk into your family room and you're looking at the things, the small things, the knickknacks, the tchotchkes, the, you know, all of those things, get rid of almost all of them. I generally will walk in a room and for the most part, I'm asking people to remove as much as 40 to 50% of what's in those larger rooms. Now, do I ask people to remove furniture and televisions and things? Well, I have asked people to remove furniture before. If it's a piece that's impeding flow, anything like that. So less is more when you're on the market. Light and bright is better when you're on the market. That's the time to paint the walls. Don't paint them the color you always wanted. You've always wanted a dramatic navy blue family room. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because your buyer might not want that. So just go to a light neutral color. So I'm going to say either white or a very light beige or a very, very light gray. Sherwin-Williams, my favorite colors um, come out of that Sherwin-Williams palette. There's one called Accessible Beige that I totally love. It can lean warm or cool. So though that's the direction you want to go. And then also spiff up the outside, water the grass, turn the sprinkler system on if it's off, paint the outside, paint the trim. You know, if you don't want to do landscaping, at least put some potted plants, flowers on your front porch. So it looks inviting, maybe a cute little chair. We have big porches in Florida. So make it inviting. Those things matter. All right, number three, another really common one. And this would apply really all over the country. Um, can I buy and sell at the same time? And the answer is yes, absolutely. You absolutely can. The follow-up to that is usually, well, what if I need the money out of my house to buy a new house? So if you're in a market where they do house sale contingencies, our market in Southwest Florida, it's kind of a fast moving market still. So a house sale contingency is not as common. Every now and again, we can get that, even if it's contingent on the close or maybe if we can show that, hey, this person is ready. They have put their house on the market up in Michigan and they're ready to go. They're not just, you know, winging it and yeah, take my contract contingent on the sale of my house, but I'm not going to put my house on the market for a month. Nobody is going to do that. So if you can get a house sale contingency, that works. If you cannot, then there are lots of things you can do. So for example, maybe you want to do a HELOC, a home equity line of credit on the house that you have up in Michigan or wherever it is. So if you have equity in the house, you might be able to pull enough to source the down payment or even source the entire purchase, in which case you are buying firm. So that works. Then also, any good agent, I have lenders who will do not what's called a bridge loan, but there's some newer, it's similar to a bridge without all the fees. There are some new products out there that will allow you to appear to be a firm buyer and they kind of bet on the whole transaction with you. So they fund the purchase and they give you X amount of time to get your house sold. Usually that's a year. So those are really good products as well. I've utilized those with some of my buyers from up north multiple times when they really need to get the cash out of their house in order to purchase 
the next one. And yes, by the way, we close on the same day all the time. So I hope those were helpful for you. Let me know down in comments if there are any questions that are important to you that I can answer on this channel. And again, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if I can do anything to help, all my contact information is below. Call, text, email. I'm happy to help.